What's up YouTube, Colin here, the Wall CEO. Top five cooking oils, or six, or whatever I have here. The top healthy cooking oils, especially for high heat cooking. Right now I'm doing a carnivore based diet, very keto. It's all paleo, it's all real food. So really it's a carnivore, keto, paleo, real food diet. And these are the best oils for the healthy human animal, right? So it's every diet, every human. These are the ones you're gonna wanna stick with. And the ones that aren't featured here are gonna be the ones you want to avoid. I don't have a big bottle of vegetable oil to tell you that that's toxic poison you should not put in your body, but maybe I can Photoshop one right here, right? And we don't wanna eat a bunch of nuts and seed oils because they oxidize so rapidly and they're full of omega-6 and omega-9. These oils today, we're gonna talk about each one real quick and maybe some B-roll of how to use it, but really for the most part, you know how to use oil. You put it in a pan, you heat it, put some food in it, cook it, <laughs> simple. Let's talk about these foods, how to buy them, how to use them, what the properties are, etc. One of the oils that you probably shouldn't be using and or buying that often that everybody says is amazing for you and that is olive oil. <laughs> olive oil is actually one of the most counterfeited foods on the planet, believe it or not. Most olive oil that is tested on supermarket shelves, I believe the numbers were around 90% were fake if they took random bottles of olive oil. We're talking the good stuff, the cheap stuff, the, whatever. Most of it's fake. Most of it's a combination of canola oil, grapeseed oil. Sometimes it's even soybean oil. Organic doesn't necessarily mean it's any better. There's just a lot of food fraud that goes on in our country, in fact, everywhere, that most consumers have no idea about, right? This is a whole nother deep rabbit hole to go down into. I just read a book called Real Food, Fake Food on this. It's pretty startling, actually. But olive oil is one of those big foods that is just so fake so often that you probably don't want to eat it. That's the one thing. It also oxidizes very easily, so you almost never want to heat olive oil. I stick with really good olive oil. This is, I don't think it's even a good brand. This honestly, I told my mom not to buy this again. This was in the, I mean, it might be okay, brag, uh, maybe, I don't know. I would just avoid buying olive oil unless you like can buy directly from a single producer that owns the farm. There are a couple brands where you can do that. And so stick with that and then don't heat them. Just, you know, pour it for salads and as a, as a dressing or as a marinade maybe, but don't, don't really heat olive oil. So that's that taken care of. Now the other one is one of those awesome, awesome fats and it is ghee, which is clarified butter. Now clarified butter is basically butter that's heated up so that the fat solids basically separate and then you pour off what's left, which is clarified butter. And then there's some versions like uh, if it's a more brown, it's kind of more the Indian style where they, they brown it, make it a little bit nutty. So you have kind of a brown ghee, whereas this is just like a plain ghee where they separate the milk solids and strain it off. Uh, and this is just really an amazing product. It has all of the amazing properties of butter, but you can cook with it on a higher temperature because you remove the milk solids and it won't burn, right? So if you've ever put butter in a pan, like when you're cooking a steak and you're doing the, the butter basting method and you start really smelling the burntness and you can even taste that, that's when you're burning the butter, you're oxidizing, that's not good, you wanna avoid that. So ghee is something that, I mean, you could even put this in coffee, like if you're doing like a butter coffee or something, you can, you can do this instead of butter. It's really an all around amazing product. Ideally, you're gonna find grass-fed ghee uh, and organic grass-fed would be even more ideal, right? So that's that's high heat, I, I love ghee, it's awesome, use it, okay? Now, before we get to the, probably the last product, the main product, I'm gonna talk about this one. I don't have a product for, which is kind of sad considering I'm the CEO, but this is wild MCT oil. This is a an organic uh, fractionated, it's basically fractionated coconut oil, which what they're doing is they're separating the different fatty acids, right? You have the C6, the C8, the C10, the C12, C14, I think there's even the C16. And, and they're separating those out through a distillation process, distillation process. They're taking just the C8 and the C10, which are considered those medium chain fatty acids that they don't, it doesn't oxidize, doesn't go rancid, and is way more stable when you don't have the C6 and the other uh, longer form fatty acids. And there's a lot of benefits, like this passes the blood brain very faster. It's gonna affect your caloric load different than most foods, which is one of those benefits of fat, of how it like metabolizes and how they say, uh, benefits MCT, I should say, not fat that it basically can't contribute to fat gain because your body just uses it as fuel and immediately it can also be a precursor to help with ketone production. I just love it, it's a great product because it's flavorless, it's odorless, it's at, you can see room temperature, it's liquid, and it is from organic coconuts and it's very, very stable. I wouldn't heat this beyond medium heat. 
So this is actually a really good product to bake on or to make something over low heat, like maybe some scrambled eggs or whatever. It's also used more commonly in coffees and smoothies and shakes. You could even use it as a dressing, pour it over, right? Or, or making a salad dressing, you could use something like this and maybe mix it with a little bit of olive oil and then some vinegar and you have a homemade vinaigrette that doesn't have to use whatever other crap oils that most of the crap supermarket salad oils have. So MCT oil, which you can get yours at wildfoods.co, use code, damn, I always hurt my code. I'm pretty sure it's Wild CEO. Wild CEO for 12% off your entire order at wildfoods.co. I might have to edit that and fix that. I don't know if that's right. Uh, as you can see, I bought this top for this mason jar and it's an easy pour. And because I want it to be in glass, it's great. You can also do like a vinegar bottle with the spout. That works. You want it to, to just be easy to pour, to use. You, you really do. Okay. Now, done, 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 done for the most important cooking oil that has really just swept the market in the past couple of years because this stuff did not exist before, I would say two years ago. Avocado oil, avocado oil, dun, 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 dun. Can you even see it? I'm not necessarily endorsing this brand. It looks all right. I don't know. Most avocado oil is going to be pretty similar. Like this is a product of Mexico. Avocado is one of those products you don't really need to buy organic. It just doesn't matter. And most avocado is good for that fact. So this is a 100% pure avocado oil and it's just ingredient avocado oil. That's it. Now, I will say the jury is still out on the kind of omega-6, omega-9 ratio. This is gonna have, it's got some good omega-3 in here. Uh, I believe it's a, it's, it's a lot of monounsaturated. Uh, in fact, I really need to brush up on what actually is an avocado, I forget. But I do remember that avocado oil and the omega profile could be something that you might want to pay attention to. Like if you're eating a lot of avocados, and I remember a quote back in the day, Rob was saying that some of his clients were having trouble leaning out and they were just pounding avocados. That's just literally like this anecdote in my mind that I remember. Uh, so that might require some further research. I don't use so much of this where I think it matters. I'm, I'm mostly using this as a high heat cooking oil so that I can sear something like a steak and I don't have to use something like grapeseed oil or canola oil or any of that other garbage vegetable oil that you, me, everyone on the planet should not be eating, okay? So avocado oil is my go-to for high heat cooking. It is one of the most stable high heat cooking oils there is. I think I think the rated temperature is like 500 degrees, which is pretty substantial. Yeah, avocado oil. And now another form that I really like from this brand, Chosen Foods, is this avocado oil spray. Let's see. Oh, whoa. That was a stream, that wasn't a spray. Um, I hope I didn't, I'm gonna have to find out where that went. <laughs> Problems. Okay, my, my bottle's literally not working. Maybe I need to shake it or something. There we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe it doesn't work upright. I don't know. Maybe no one actually, I mean, if you think about it, who's actually spraying anything like this? Probably no one. So maybe you have to do like that. So. It's a cool product. There's no propellants in here and there's no preservatives or chemicals. So this is actually a really cool product, especially if you want to just add a little bit of non-stickness to your pan, you know, maybe instead of drizzling it in, in this, you could use a little bit of spray, great product. So really this is my go-to for most of my cooking, to be honest, you know, uh, I if I'm searing steaks or whatever, I'm gonna be doing medium to medium high heat and I'm gonna get that nice crust. And so this is really my go-to. Everything else, I'm gonna use a combination of clarified broth, Oh, I don't have butter. I forgot. I don't have butter. So butter is the other most important cooking fat that I use, but that doesn't, that's in the fridge. <laughs> I guess I don't have a reason for it not being here right now, but you need to use that on lower heat, medium tops, because butter can burn. I think the, the rated safe uh, temperature is 350 degrees. So keep that in mind. So, so butter, that's something I use. I actually like to melt butter, add some herbs and then pour it over my food. That's my preferred way to do it or to kind of base the steak or to, you know, throw someone on, on some fish after I've seared it, whatever. And then I like to do the searing, the high heat with avocado oil and or ghee. And then I like to use this, like I said, for medium cooking, baking, maybe it's like scrambled eggs, uh, drinks, uh, smoothies, shakes, that kind of stuff. And then with olive oil, you don't want to heat it. It's purely something that goes on food after or on raw ingredients, okay? So that's gonna wrap up today's video, a really short intro to the most important cooking, I should say healthy cooking fats and healthy cooking oils that, that really everyone should, doesn't matter what diet, right? Because if you're cooking food at home, you're gonna need a combination of medium heat, low heat, and high heat, and you wanna find fats that aren't full of omega-6, that don't oxidize easily, and that aren't going to make your long-term health suspect, right? Like there's just so much with vegetable oils and seed oils and 
just other refined oils and nuts. Like there is so many problems with omega-6 heavy, pro-inflammatory, easily oxidized, maybe even oxidized before it even gets home, then oxidized when you cook with it. There is so much of that on the market. It's actually the staple. It's also one of the reasons why you can't really be long-term healthy eating out at restaurants. You just can't, right? Because they use all this crap oils. So I hope you find this video useful. Go and get some of these, right? Stock your pantry up with, I mean, if I, I would just like say really just this, right? And, and I'll just get some MCT oil because it's versatile for a lot of other reasons. And this is actually really good on the body if you have some skin issues. It can also be used in the bedroom. Get these oils, put them in your pantry, make them a staple, and then let me know how you think in the comments of how you use these or like to use these or if you have questions or comments specifically about any of these or maybe an oil I'm not thinking of. I know I'm not, not mentioning lard, tallow, or uh, I even have a bison tallow. Really, it would probably just be lard and tallow and tallow is really good too. But again, those are kind of medium heat oils. You don't really want to use those for high heat cooking, which is why I go to the plant kingdom uh, and use a, the fruit oil. It's actually fruit oil. Oh, palm oil. That's another one. So really good red palm oil if it's sustainable, which most of it isn't. Uh, that can be a good high heat cooking oil as well. And then obviously coconut oil is not mentioned here, but this is basically coconut oil. So this actually has a higher smoke point than coconut oil because they've removed some of those more fragile fatty acids. Uh, coconut oil though is again, it's kind of like a 350 rating. You don't really want to heat it beyond that or you run into issues, okay? So I hope you found this video useful. Like and comment below, drop all these things. What is your favorite cooking oil? Like what is the thing that the oil that you use every single day? What is, is there something I'm missing here? You know, is there something you want to add to this? Drop it below and let me know what you think. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want more videos on keto, carb, real food, paleo, and a high fat, low carb, intermittent fasting way of living. I know it's a lot. It really depends on your flavor and your style of the month, but I got tons of more videos on that. Right now, personally, before you tap out, I'm doing a lot of carnivore, so I have a lot more videos coming out. We actually Sean Baker on the podcast today, so I'm excited about that. Make sure you like and subscribe, and you can find the podcast on iTunes, Apple, or iTunes is Apple, Spotify, or Google Play, uh, The Ancestral Mime. We got a lot of great content there, and you can really get more of in-depth, interviews on all things health, nutrition, uh, food, life, even some mindset and psychology at times, and even some productivity stuff at times, all right? So I'll see you in the next one.